Fabulous Philly. And I'm going to be here taking notes just, um, just to connect it with my, uh, my learning experience through my internship. Um, I'm not conducting research or anything, um, <clears throat> but since there are corresponding classes to my internship, um, some of this information might be shared with my classroom and um, I'm not gonna share any names or anything like that. Um, but just, uh, you know, just know that I'm here doing that and that uh, potentially this information could be shared with my classmates. Great, thank you so much for sharing that, Alex. Happy you could join us today. Um, so welcome to um, another workshop of Skills for Fab Life, the how-tos, insider knowledge, and tips for being successful on your own terms. Um, we run a handful of these workshops already, some pilot workshops this past fall, um, and this is our second workshop of the new year. Um, as we are approaching tax season, um, making sure that, um, as we're approaching tax season, just making sure that we're giving um, our young people um, some knowledge and, and tips around filing taxes for the first time. As a reminder, the session is being recorded. Um, we may use it for future use. We don't really have um, a plan yet, but just saving it just in case. And if you have any, any concerns or issues with that, you can reach out to um, myself or Ms. Rebecca privately. Um, a few community agreements that we like to set in all of our workshops. Um, we hope that you can be um, an active participant. Um, one mic, that means not talking over each other, um, using the hand raising icon or throwing up your hand in the video, um, respecting each other's voices and opinions. Um, we want you to be curious, ask questions, and if possible, um, stay on camera with us. That it's not so lonely up here. Um, before we get into our predictions, assumptions, and disclaimers, I'm actually going to introduce myself um, and allow my colleague, um, Michael, to also introduce himself. So my name is Amelia. I'm um, a consultant with Fab Youth Philly. I've held a variety of roles supporting um, different aspects of programming. Um, and uh, these workshops is uh, one of the uh, initiatives that I've implemented so far. Um, and I'll let Michael introduce himself. I am Michael Grant. I am the Youth Programs Manager at Fab Youth Philly. Although I am new to Fab Youth Philly, I've been working with young people um, for almost 10 years now. Great, thank you. Um, so our topic tonight is, I got my W-2, now what do I do? Um, a lot of young people are getting their W-2s for the first time. If they've worked a summer job or an after-school job, um, you should have received your W-2 um, so we're going to go through these predictions, assumptions, and disclaimers, um, a tool that we've used, um, that we use in our workshops, borrowed from um, some friends at the Lakeside, Lakeside Global Institute. Um, we predict that taxes are confusing and scary. Um, some of you may feel overwhelmed at the thought of filing taxes, and that's okay. I know I'm overwhelmed at the thought of filing taxes. Um, we assume that you have received your W-2. Um, employers had to send them out at the end of January, so hopefully you have a W-2 to follow along during this workshop. If not, um, we'll, be, we'll have some um, snapshots that, that you can follow along with. Um, lastly, we are not tax experts, Michael and I. The information that we provide to you tonight is just to help guide you to seeking out professional tax services, but we are not providing any sort of legal tax advice tonight. Uh, last thing also, uh, throughout the night, we'll be using different tax definitions. Uh, we'll try to put them in the chat as we go along. If you have a question about one of the terms you use, look to the chat. If you have a question you want to ask us, just raise your hand and we'll be glad to either answer it or try to get an answer for it. These are some of the, the words that you might hear us throwing out over the course of the workshop. Um, and so we're actually going to start with a video. Um, there it is. 
Um, so this is that the closed captioning. Yes, thank you. It'll go into what is a W-2 form? So let me, ah, nope, that's not right. Hold on. Let's see. Want to play. All right. Hi, YouTube. It's Chanelli here. What, uh, what do you see? Do you see YouTube or the slides? You see the slides? Technical difficulties. Hmm. You might just have to come out of the share screen, click the video, and then reshare in a different, like um, change the, the view, maybe. I'm going to open to YouTube. Sorry, one second. I have it ready if you want me to share. Okay, I think I've share sound. What do you see? YouTube video? All right, closed captionings. W2. Hi YouTube, it's Chanelli here. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the W-2 form. And tax season makes things really, really, really stressful for a lot of people out there because there's a lot of different tax forms and things get complicated and confusing. But thank goodness, the W-2 is actually one of the more basic and most common forms out there. Now, the W-2 form is only gonna be given to people who are an employee of a company or have an employer that they work at. So if you go to a typical job, Monday to Friday, or whatever your schedule is, and you have a salary or wages that you earn throughout the year if it's more than six hundred dollars then your employer has to legally send a w-2 form to the irs so what's on the w-2 form why is this so important this can kind of get complicated so i'm not going to go through every single box because we're just going to cover the basics here on top you can see your social security number the employer's name and address your name and your address the tax year for these forms the, the wages, compensation, and tips that you've earned in that year, and all the taxes withheld, Social Security tax, Medicare tax, federal taxes. There's so many different taxes that come out of our paycheck. It hurts every time you see your check and you look at it, you go, oh my goodness, this is how much they took out in taxes. Like they're taking all my money. They're not taking all of your money, but they do take a cut and it goes to different types of taxes. Maybe if you're curious, take a look at your pay stub and take a look to see what are the different taxes that are coming out of your paycheck. When you go to file your taxes, you need to have your W-2 form on you. you need to have that paper in front of you so that you know exactly what numbers to type in if you're doing your taxes on the computer like most people do but back in the day before people had online software they actually did it by paper they would literally mail four different versions of taxes well three different versions of the taxes would get mailed out one to the federal government one to the state that you are filing for if they have a state um taxes that you have to pay you have to send it to the state and also the local government there so like the city that you're from um you have to make sure that you pay taxes to that locality or that you file your taxes there so that's why they give you different copies and then the fourth copy is for you to keep for your records in january when you get your w-2 you want to make sure that you look at the numbers and that it all makes sense if you know you worked over the summer and you made about four thousand dollars but your w-2 only says you made four hundred dollars that means that somebody at the company was filling out the W-2 form and they forgot to type in a zero, or maybe they put the decimal in the wrong place. And so you have to be responsible and look over these numbers and make sure that it all looks good to go before you go ahead and file your taxes. Because once you submit your taxes to the IRS, it can be a pain to go through trying to correct your taxes and explain to the IRS why you entered things incorrectly in the first place. So it's better to try to catch any mistakes before you file your taxes. All of this information is available available on your W-2 form. So it's really important that you get that piece of paper. And if you haven't received it by January 31st, then you want to make sure you call your employer and the company that you worked for and say, hey, I haven't received my W-2. This is super important. I need it in order to file my taxes by April. And so please send it to me ASAP. That is pretty much what you need to know about your W-2. But if you have any other questions about the W-2, please put them All right, 
So yeah, she talked very quickly and, and those closed captionings moved pretty quickly as well. So I'm gonna reshare my screen here. So that was a very quick video with a, <laughs> a lot of information. Uh, we're gonna try to break it down for you just a, a little bit. Uh, so I'm, first I wanna drop into the chat a little bit is um, I mentioned W-2s. And when we talk about W-2, what we're trying to examine is our wages. Uh, that's the money that we earn uh, throughout the previous year. So right now in 2021, where your W-2 should reflect all the money that you earned in 2020. Um, you should have received this from your, your job or your employer um, by January, if not February the latest. If you haven't heard from them yet, you should definitely reach back out to your employer and get that information because you definitely you need that in order to file taxes. Um, so reading your W-2. If you ever seen a W-2, this is an example of a blank W-2. We're gonna take you box by box and kind of show you what you should be looking for in each box. So I mentioned before, uh, wages, that's the, mo the money you earned. Uh, should be pretty straightforward. That's gonna be in box number one. Uh, next, we're gonna go to look at box three, uh, the social security wages. Now, every check, you get a little bit of money taken out. Uh, you'll see some, for Social Security, you'll see some for Medicare, and these are taxes that goes towards the government. And after your age, a certain age, you get some of that money back in retirement. So it may look like, you know, why am I paying this now? But it's some money that health benefits uh, us, any people that's currently retired. Uh, so I just dropped that in the message as well. So that's box three and five is Social Security taxes. Medicare taxes. Box seven is uh, if you earn have a job that earn tips, such as a restaurant job, those are separated from your other wage, your hourly wages, and that's in box seven. So if you have one of those jobs, it is separated out and because you're not typically taxed that um, each paycheck. So they separate that out on your W-2. And last thing is in summary of all the wages that should be taxed will be in that box 16. That's the number that's going to be used to show your year, your income from for the year for that job. Any, I know that's a lot of information. Any questions about that? Have you seen this before in the boxes? Any W 2? Yes, Josh. Hold on one second for the interpreter, just a sec. No problem. Just waiting for the screen to unfreeze. No problem. You were talking about the wages. Uh, box 16 and one are separate. So for example, if I have a job where I'm getting paid a certain amount, I need to inform the government about how much I'm earning and then separate that out for the state. Like if I'm in New York, I have to file for New York Yes. Yeah. So you have to file taxes in every state you're in. New York City is tricky because you also have to <laughs> file New York City taxes, but I would definitely ask a tax expert about that. Um, but New York City is a little different. And you also have to file taxes for the federal government. However, you use one, your W-2 will give you all the information you need for all those different levels of government. So you don't have to... Um, separate it out in that way. Box 16 just combined any hourly wages and any tips or extra money you might have made into one whole number that will be used as your taxable income. Is that clearer? I get it. That's clear. Thank you. Can I also add that if you have more than one job, you will get a W-2 from every employer that you work for. And if you have a job in more than one state, so let's say you work in New York and New Jersey, you probably have to pay taxes to New York City, New York State, the city of New Jersey where you work, and the state of New Jersey. But 
just remember that in every paycheck, some of that money is being taken out automatically. And that goes to the government in every paycheck. So let's say you earned $100, right? You worked all week, you earned $100. Your check is probably going to say $86.50 because the government already takes that a little money in each check. And this W-2 shows you how much they've taken out for the whole year. So it shows you everything that you earned and how much you already took out. And you use that information, Michael just put in the chat, you use that information to file your tax return. So you hear about tax day on April 15th. Everyone's rushing to get their taxes in. This is a summary of all of the taxes that have been taken out all year long. And so you use this to fill out a new piece of paper, taking the numbers from these boxes and putting them in a piece of paper, which gets sent to the state that confirms, yep, you paid taxes. And sometimes people owe more taxes because the government didn't take out enough in each paycheck. And sometimes, I see your eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes people pay a little too much, and that's when you get a, a tax return, right? Everybody gets new sneakers on April 16th and gets a new TV on April 16th because they got their refund check, right? That's because each week that you got your paycheck, the government took a little bit out. It's kind of like the government is using our taxes. They're like borrowing money from us in order to pay for our services all year long, right? And then you use all this information as a summary to report to the government, yep, you took all this out, I owe you a little bit more, or you owe me a little bit back. Does that help a little bit? I get it. Are you sure? Really? No, I know. Where, where don't you understand? Where are you stuck? Hold on just a sec. I'm confused about how the government takes that money. Like I work for that money and they get to just take it out of my check and I get to keep what's left. Like, yeah, that's, I know, crazy, right? That's how the garbage gets picked up. That's how the potholes get filled. It's supposed to be how our schools get funded. It's how, what else folks, help me out. It's how our military is paid for, right? So the government uses our taxes to pay for services that we all benefit from. Social services as well. Uh, so whenever they talk about people like food stamps and things like that, government benefits that comes from taxes. Um, roads, streets, highways, parks, all get built with uh, taxpayer money. So some of the things that we need to essentially exist as a country gets paid for with taxes. Um, and that's, that's a very simple version of it. <laughs> it's all, it gets really, really complicated, but that's the reason why we all pay taxes. And the more money you make, the more taxes you pay. So if you're low income, you tend to pay less taxes. But the theory is that if you have more money, if you miss, go, you pay a little more taxes, you don't miss it as much as someone who makes very little money. So, very good question, Dad. so typically, you'll get a refund if you have lower amount of money you made throughout the year, um, your tax liability or tax, you, you don't really owe the government money, they probably owe you money. But if you made a lot, a lot of money, you might have to owe, pay the government a little bit more money. So, but it's what we pay to live in a good society <laughs> in theory. Is there anything else you want to ask, Josh? Mm. 
<laughs> what about you, Alex? Do you have any questions for us? As we... one more question. I have one more question. So you're explaining that when you work, so you earn a certain amount of money for the year and depending on how much you get, you might have to pay a lot, you might have to pay a little. Uh, and you also might get a lot or a little back for a refund, but how does the government know how much you're supposed to pay for taxes? So there, there are certain, good question. There are certain tax brackets that exist based on how much money you make. And so set by the thousands and hundred thousands of dollars and the government just has these numbers determined I don't know where they determine these numbers. Yeah, some some formula, but they've predetermined these different brackets. And so um, uh, wealthier folks are in a and are in a higher tax bracket than um, low income um, individuals. And so the the amount of tax uh, taxes that are taken out is different based on those different brackets and where where you fall based on your annual income. So imagine if you make 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, right? That's one bracket. People from 10,000 to 50,000 have, I'm making this up, 5% taxes. People who are 60, 70, 80, 90, 100,000 dollars are 15% taxes. I'm making that up. Don't use those numbers because each state has different taxes. So New York City might tax at 10%. New Jersey might tax at 8%. Cities in California, like San Francisco, might tax at 15%. That's why some cities are so expensive to live in. So the numbers I gave you is just to show you a picture. It's, those are not real numbers. So forget those numbers, but just as a, to paint a picture. <laughs> Anything else? Well, we'll be, all, we'll be also able to answer some more questions on the next slide as well. So we'll move into when to file. All right, so um, this is about actually filing your taxes. So you've gotten your W-2 and now you're ready to file. Um, so even if you're technically still a dependent on your parents, and so that might mean um, you live with them, they, they pay your bills, stuff like that. Even if your parents still claim you as a dependent on their own tax return, you might still need to file based on how much money you earned. Um, and you should file taxes um, based on, um, based on your earned income or your unearned income. And so if you are uh, dependent of another taxpayer, you don't have to file a return if earned income is under $12,200 for the tax year. Most young people, their income is under that. However, if you're an employer withheld money from your paycheck for taxes, which they probably did, you might be owed a refund and you can't get that refund if you don't file a tax return. So even if you're a dependent and you haven't earned um, uh, as much as $12,200, you still won't know if you're owed a refund until you file your taxes. So it's always best to file even if you don't meet that income. And there are big penalties for people who don't pay their taxes. Like the actor Wesley Snipes didn't pay his taxes and spent a lot of time in jail for not paying his taxes. So it's really important to pay your taxes. Otherwise the government will take everything from you. And it's, it ruins your credit. Hard to get things like a car and a home. So you have to always, always, always file your taxes. And just a reminder, Typically, your every paycheck, some tax is already coming out. So if you're on that system and you're not making hundreds of thousands of dollars, typically you won't have to owe, worry about paying too much at the end of the year. Uh, so it's, it's just a reminder that you are paying taxes at, throughout the year as you go along. 
so that in theory you don't have a huge tax bill uh, at the end of the year. Um, also, our like Millie said, our biggest encouragement is, especially if you are making under twelve thousand for the year, and your parents are filing for you or you're a dependent, we still encourage you to file taxes because most likely you are owed money back because you're a low co income individual. The government will actually give you your some of your taxes back. So we definitely encourage you to file if you make underneath the twelve thousand two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you won't know if you're owed a refund until until you file. Um, taxes are due April 15th. April 15th, that is officially tax day. Um, it's a very busy day. Um, this in this past year, um, I think it was extended until July. I think due to the pandemic. Um, so this this past April, it got extended and allowed folks. Um, some more time to figure out their their taxes and get all their documents just due to the the total disruption of um, the coronavirus. So, but as of right now, this year taxes are due April fifteenth. There haven't been any um, extensions or or anything like that yet. Um, and so, there's a few different ways to file. Um, you can get the help of a tax professional, um, and this can really help with a lot of the stress and confusion around taxes. Um, more than half of the country that pays their taxes does, uh, they, they do seek out um, some professional um, uh, tax advice. You could also use a tax software. There's um, TurboTax, there's um, H&R Block, there's lots of different um, tax softwares, that can be a good option if your tax situation is pretty simple. Or you could do it the old fashioned way, filling out all the paperwork yourself and mailing it to the IRS. Um, I think it is generally recommended if you're new to filing taxes, this is what I've read. Um, if you're new to filing taxes, um, going with one of the, the first two options. So seeking out um, professional legal advice um, from a tax professional or using a tax software that can help you input, um, input all of your information. Questions about filing, and, and we'll get into um, a specific way to file with the 1040 EZ. Yeah, I have a question. Why did you say that 50% of Americans use a tax professional? That is just a statistic. That, that's a that that's a statistic that um that I read about um, and so because filing taxes is so stressful and confusing for for people, they they just want to seek out. Um, a professional to help them with their their taxes. So that's a whole entire career is dedicating your life to helping people do their taxes. Um, you can be um, a, a tax uh, professional, a tax advisor. There, there's lots of different roles just within taxes um, that that folks uh, do. <laughs> So Josh, that also means that the other 42% do it themselves. So it's not that the 42% don't file taxes. It just means they do it themselves. And then 58% ask to pay for someone else to do it. So more than half of Americans feel like this is so hard. I just want to pay for someone else to do it right. And then there are some people who are like, I'm smart. I can use a form on the computer. I'll do it myself and save myself $85, so $185. Uh, for example, in 2019, I moved from New York to Pennsylvania. So 
So I had two jobs in two different states and had to figure out those taxes in both states and both jobs. Uh, it was much easier to make sure for me personally to pay someone to do it right than for me to mess it up <laughs> and have to owe money again later. So sometimes you do it so you don't have to think about it and you have to screw it up. But if you have one job in one place, sometimes you might be just willing to do it yourself. What else? Any other questions about this? We have another video to watch. No, no more questions. Okay. So bear with me again. I'm sure this is not going to work again. All right. And this one, we're actually going to jump around. So we're not watching the entire video. This is the form, Josh, that you use. So you use your W-2 to complete this form that we're about to see a video about. So there's a W-2 and then there's a 1040. That's the form you submit to the federal government with all the information it came from your W-2. So what are we, what we're going to show you now is a video. If you wanted to do it yourself and you have super simple taxes, I say simple in terms of you have a, one job, they take your taxes out every paycheck. Uh, you don't have a lot of investments and properties. Um, you have a pretty simple income. This form might be something you can do yourself to help figure out your taxes. Okay, so we're going to start it about a minute in. And I've got closed captioning on. Let me. How much money did you make? So, how much money you made was right here on the first line 76,350. Now, going to my 1040 EZ, that's what I'm going to put here 76,000. And I just forgot exactly how much it was. 350. So 76,350. Okay. Now for this particular example, and the ones that we're going to do in this class, lines two and three, it talks about taxable interest, meaning if you got money off of maybe a savings account or something, or step or line three is unemployment, just in, you know, if you didn't have a job, but you're getting uh, an unemployment check, uh, that's what you would fill in for two and three, but we're just going to skip two and three. All right. Now, add lines one, two, and three. So we're at 76,350. Okay. Now, most of what you have to do is, I mean, it tells you on the line what exactly you're supposed to do, but, um, but yeah. But anyway, okay. So if someone you, uh, can claim you uh, line five, now we are going to always in this class just claim yourself okay and it says my uh, uh, filing uh, jointly and all that stuff we're just going to hold off but it says uh enter the amount on the worksheet on back all right so here you're going to take uh your form go to the back and this is a small little equation with itself all right so amount if any from line one well you remember that's how much money you made which was seventy six thousand three fifty. so that will be put right here so 76,350. Now what we're going to add is we're going to add 350. Now that's a number that is predetermined by the federal government. So just don't uh, go crazy on figuring out where that came from. All right. Now, now we're on line C, enter the larger of A or B. So A or B, we have 76,700. And we got 1,050, obviously 76,000 is larger. Now remember, just follow along with the directions of your, uh, of each line. It says maximum standard deduction. If you're single, which we will be for this entire unit, we're single, we're going to enter 6,300. All right, so once again, a number that has been predetermined by the federal government. So exemption amount, if we're single, enter, enter zero, which we are, we are. Oop, I forgot to do E. Enter the smaller line of uh, C or D. So C or D I'm entering in the smaller, which which was 6,300. 
Sorry about that. I skipped that prediction. All right, add lines E and F. So E and F is going to be 63. Now, I'm going to just kind of give you a heads up. It's going to be 6,300 for this entire unit. So um, we're not going to change from going from single to marry jointly or whatever. So, but anyway, this 6,300 number right here on line G, we're going to bring that back to line 5, which is 6,300. Okay. Now just follow along. Six. Subtract line five from line four. All right. So we're at seventy thousand fifty dollars. All right. Number seven is here, federal income tax withheld uh, from W two. All right. Now W two. It tells you we got to go back to the W two. So let's see if I can find my W two. Federal income tax withheld. It is right here. 15,851. That number is what's going on for this one right here. So 18,000, I just forgot again. 15,851. All right, I wrote it right now. So the next thing is 8A. We're skipping that. We're not doing any type of earned income credit, as well as uh, eight, these little lines here we're going to skip it says add line seven and eight so we're going to add line seven and eight which is fifteen thousand eight hundred fifty one zero zero all right now here we go question number ten tax Oops. use the amount on line six line six is this seventy thousand so let me highlight that just so this seventy thousand fifty this number here represents uh, the amount that should be uh, taxable income, all right? So from here, where you're going to have to go is you're going to have to go to that tax. All right, I'm going to skip ahead, um, and he's going to show us about the tax brackets that we had talked about, which is um, the, the different uh, tiers or, or brackets that um, the government has identified. All right, so this is an example of a tax bracket, and he'll explain a little bit about how he gets those 70,050, there it is, this very first number, 13,300, because the way you read this is the first column represents how much you're paying if you're single. So 13,300, that's where we're going, 13,300. So for line 10, we're going to write 13,000. Let me do that again, 300. So 13300 13300 That's how much money the government says should have been taken from you. All right, line 11, it says health, individual health care responsibility. We're going to skip that as well. All right, it says add lines 10 and 11. So 10 and 11, that ends up being $13,300. Remember, remember, I'm writing with my mouse here. All right, 13A. Right, so 13A, what does it say? If line 9 is larger than line 12, nine, or uh, line 9 is right here, 12 is right there, what does it say? Subtract 12 from 9, so that's 15,851, so 15,851 minus 13,300, I'm left with a balance, I'm going to do this in purple here, 2,000. Five hundred and fifty one dollars. Now it says this is your refund, which means I'm actually going to get some money back from the government. So basically what we have here is over the course of the year, I ended up paying fifteen thousand eight hundred and fifty one dollars. The government says I should have paid thirteen thousand three hundred. So I actually paid more than I should have over the course of the year. So that's why we have um, this line down here. This is my refund. So I paid more. So the government says, hey, you paid more. You're going to get some back. So we're going to call it even after this, so to speak. So $2,551 is how much I'm getting back. And this is as far as we're going to go. All right. So that was a, that's a lot of numbers, a lot of math. Um, and so that, let me get back to my slides. 
Yeah, so it's I know it's more math, but that's a that's a way to do it yourself if your taxes are simple, straightforward. Um, the IRS that the form walks you through step by step exactly what you're looking for, where you pull the numbers from, the math you're really doing, just adding and subtracting. That's it. And you can do it with a calculator. And at the end, you hopefully find out that you have a refund and not that you owe money. <laughs> yeah, and so that that was an example with a fairly high salary. Um, and so that's why that that tax bracket, he was looking at the 70, 70,000 and where he, that's where he pulled that, that number from. Um, this is just an example of the 1040 EZ. So that, that's the form that you fill out. Um, you take the information from your W-2 and you basically input it into this form. Um, as you saw, there's directions for each line. And so it, it tells you kind of where to add and where to subtract as you saw in the video and how he, he got to all of those different numbers. Um, and that, that's what it looks like if you do it yourself. Um, and so that there's some other, there's the other options of seeking out help and using an, um, an online service, but that's what it would look like if you did it yourself. Questions about that. So this is filing your tax return by yourself. About that third option, if I were going to file it myself, that 1040 EZ form. So I use the W-2 and I take that information, add and subtract it onto that form. But then it mentions something about that if you're married or a dependent, what does all that mean? So if you are filing, or if you're with somebody or you're not with somebody, like that part confuses me. Confuses me too. <laughs> um, you want me to answer, Millie? Yes. <laughs> so um, if you are married, they don't just look at your income. They look at you and your partner's in income. That's why they ask if you're filing single or not single. And when they say single, they're talking about married or not married, not if you boot up or not. Um, I gotta learn sign language for that. So this form, uh, you could do it with a spouse or a partner, um, but this the way that you can do it online using the free uh, 1040EZ uh, is one way you can do it with just by yourself. Now, dependent means whether or not your parents uh, are filing taxes for you as well. There's a certain age limit, um, and I don't want to say the wrong age, so I'm not going to give you a number, but I would say if your parents are still filing taxes for you or you're still living with them, I would communicate with them to make sure that you are both on the same page about your taxes. Because if they're filing for you, they may ask you for your W-2, and they might just take care of it for you. They might include that income. They might include your income in their income. So that's why it's important, like Michael said, to communicate with your guardian, your parent, and either give them the W-2 to file with their taxes, or they'll say, you file on your own. Did I, answer, did I answer all of your questions? Yeah. All right. So this, these are free tax prep services. And so we talked earlier um, about paying a professional to just completely do your taxes. You give them all the forms you give them all the forms and um, they'll just do everything for you. The video we just showed you is one of the free ways. Yeah, one second, uh, sorry. Uh, frozen? No Hold on one second, this, this screen is frozen. Is it frozen for you, Donna, too? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
I believe the campaign for working families also is in New York. So I think this is applicable. United Way also. I think it's applicable mm -hmm. for both Philly and New York. Great. I'm gonna text them. Are you text texting them, Rebecca? Them. Yeah. Okay. Alex, do you have any questions? I don't. Um, earlier, I, earlier, I wanted to mention that I swear by TurboTax. Oh, <laughs> just, good just to know. Yeah. Um, well, feel free to talk about your experience with TurboTax because I tried it once and I didn't wasn't successful. Mm -hmm. so I, I saw it help. <laughs> <laughs> my my uh, my tax situation has always been fairly simple. Um, it doesn't get it doesn't get really complicated for me. Um, I always had just kind of one job, you know, here's my, uh, my school W2, which it's not, it's the form is, I don't remember what the form is called, but, um, you know, it's kind of this and that and you just mm -hmm. plug it right in. So it's never been too, too complicated for me. So I think it's, it's worked really well for me, but they do take maybe 50 bucks. It wasn't that bad. Anna, you actually, can you remind Joshua that he's a, as a student, he might get a W-2 from his college, so he should. You can tell Joshua, I'll interpret for you. Okay. Oh yeah. Right, welcome uh, back. <sighs> Go ahead, Alex. Um, sorry, Joshua, about that. sorry about that, my Wi-Fi fell off. Sorry about that. Um, as, a, as a student, you should get a form from your school that you would also file with your taxes. And what it has to do with is um, if you, if you pay tuition, if you pay anything out of pocket, um, it'll it'll ask you what your your books and other expenses are, and um, it could actually be beneficial for you. Um, for me, it's caused me to have a bigger tax return because it's it's so much of an extra expense. Um, so it's 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 been really beneficial for me. You should um, look for that form. Yes, ten ninety eight T. Um, what is it called? Uh, the 1098T. Uh, Michael put it in the in the chat. Um, my school emailed it to me, but if your school doesn't, you might have to look for it on your school's website. Um, you might be able to find it. It's probably available to you by now. I believe the Bursar's office would be the one that would have that. Thank you, Alex. Absolutely. So we we're gonna go through some of the free tax prep services that is available. Um, although it says for Philly, uh, these are options actually are available in New York as well. So the first one is the IRS website where you can go and you'll be able to fill out the 1040 EZ that you just watched a video about and just go in there and do it yourself. Um, if you fall below, below a certain income, I believe you can file for free. Um, please double check that, but I'm pretty sure that if you fall below a certain income, you can file for free. Uh, above that, you have to file and pay like the city or sorry, the state and government tax, government fee, which is about like 50 bucks each. Um, but again, please verify that. Uh, the United Way offers some free tax prep services as well. Use, uh, we can send you those links after the presentation. And the Campaign for Working Families, which also has an office in New York City, um, offers free tax prep, prep services as well. All right, that's all we had. Do you have any other questions? Hope this was helpful. I have a question. Well, it's not really a question, but just, I learned a lot of new information about taxes. Great. And I have to take care of this myself someday. So you know, as a single person, I have to learn how to do it. It's tough, but I did still learn something because when I have a job, you know, maybe from two or three different states and have to learn something new each time. It sounds like it'll be easier if it's just one state and then I'd have to 
learned, put that together with what I learned here now to see what the tax form looked like. I never really saw the tax form before what that looked like. So at least I have an understanding of what that might look like and how the system works with the government and how they take money out of my check, um, that type of thing and how that works. You know, with paying for school and things like that, them taking the money out. But I know that it really depends. Um, but I really learned a lot about that. That's great. great. Josh, so is there glad. anything else so you want to learn? Are there other topics that you want to learn? So if we were going to put together another workshop in the future, are there any topics you want to learn? You can think about it and let me know. We do, so we're going to do this every two weeks. So you should come back to the next topic. We have more all the way through June. So I think we have a cooking class. I think we have how to email uh, an employer to ask them for a job. Sound came in and out. You said a cooking class? Mm -hmm. the cooking class. Yeah. What else? Um, you we're we're going to have a teenager who's going to um, teach other teens how to email and do like a cold interview, like how to ask for a job. What else do we have coming up? Uh, we're going to talk about credit and what it driver's means to license? have credit. Yeah, credit. Uh, driver's license. license. Yeah. That's the, the, that's the next couple months. And whatever else teenagers are interested in. So we may hear back and people want to learn about one thing and we'll talk about it. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Josh. Right, yeah, thank you so much for coming. You got your own little private tax tutorial. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks so much for joining. Thank you so much, um, Donna, for, for being here with us. And we'll, we'll connect about um, the recording as well. And Alex will definitely keep you in mind for the, that workshop. <laughs> well, 